Hello and welcome back to the channel that tries to fix broken electronics and keep them out of the landfill. Today I have two consoles that were sent to me by a viewer of the channel, Brayden. Very brave person trying to send me consoles to fix, but here we are. There are two DS, the DSi and a 3DS. The DSi has shoulder button issues, which might be familiar to anyone who's seen the very first video I've done on this channel. And the 3DS has a popping issue when you try and turn it on. It doesn't turn on, it just pops. So uh, we're going to start with the DSi and try and fix that problem. And then we'll move to the 3DS to try and see if we can fix the no power issue. I'll put timestamps down below in case you're interested in one or the other for your own console. Or if you just want to follow along, let's get started. Power... see what the problem is okay so neither one of these is wanting to work it looks like all right we'll get this apart and see if we can't fix those shoulder buttons for our guy for this we're gonna need our i fix it kit with a simple phillips head screwdriver the first thing to do is remove the two screws of the battery cover and the two rubber pads covering two hidden screws. Then there are six screws on the back cover that need to be removed. Before doing that, remove the battery just for safety precautions and go ahead and remove the screws. And then with some sort of plastic pry tool, you can slide it along the edge of the bottom cover to pop it off. There are some clips holding it to the front that you can slide the tool or you know maybe your fingernail along and it should come free. You want to be careful here because the bottom shell is connected to the main motherboard with this ribbon cable. It's easy to come off and probably easy to damage so just take care at this point. And then here we can see our shoulder buttons. There are two screws holding down both shoulder buttons. And when you take them out, you want to be careful because there are springs held in place under the buttons. And if you're not careful, they could bounce away and then you'd have to crawl on the floor looking for them. Not that I speak from experience or anything like that. There's also a little metal rod that goes through the shoulder button and you don't want to lose that either. And the left button will come out from there and you can get to it and try to fix it. But to fully get the right button out, you're going to need to remove the stylus holder by removing these three screws. And then all I did was use some isopropyl alcohol, some IPA on the button along with a little air to work its way in there and give it some presses to help work the IPA into the button. You, you kind of want to soak the button a bit. It won't hurt it, but get it in there to help loosen and remove any of the dust, grime, gunk that's built up over the years. And that's pretty much what the issue is with these DS shoulder buttons. Just stuff accumulating around the button and preventing it from making a good solid connection when pushed down and not being as responsive as they once were. It's rarely that the button is completely unresponsive and needs to be replaced. So it might take a few attempts, some trial and error to get it working reliably well. And that was the case here. And once you've given it a good clean, you can reassemble the DS. This part can be a little tricky trying to get the springs back into place. I find it easier if you sort of place the spring into the shoulder button and then slide it into place, putting the metal rod through once it's in place and then the bracket goes over it. You can see here, this is how the spring fits into the button and it just slides into place. I also want to point out that there is this little metal washer that goes right here. If you were to pick this up and turn it over, this might fall out and then you're once again going to find yourself on the floor looking for a small piece of metal. 
and it's not very obvious where this piece goes, so I hope this helps clear it up. Another bracket and two screws later and the buttons are back in place. You now have to reattach the bottom shell's ribbon cable to the motherboard, and this too can be a little tricky. The best way I found to do it is to hold the ribbon cable with my thumb and finger and kind of rest the shell in my other fingers and just try and line up the cable connector with the connector on the board. It should slide in easy, don't force it, or you might bend some of the connector pins and create a real problem for yourself. Just take your time and be patient and you'll eventually get it lined up right. Then it's just a matter of reinstalling all the screws and the battery pack. Then we can test it out and see that the shoulder buttons are working a lot better than they were, much more responsive. All right, I'm gonna consider that a good fix. We got the shoulder buttons working for a guy, and let's take a look at the 3DS. 3DS, okay, so when I try to turn it on, it just blips and doesn't turn on. Hopefully that just means that one of the cables connecting the screen with ribbon cables has come loose, and that's it, and we can fix that. Otherwise, we might be looking at a new screen for this one. So for the 3DS teardown, you have to remove these four screws on the back cover, and then there are several screws along the back shell that you need to remove. And then there are two ribbon cables attaching the back shell to the motherboard, and you're going to want to remove those as well before you continue on to keep everything nice and safe. And here are all the ribbon cables you're probably going to need to remove if you want to tear this down all the way to the point you can remove the main board and get to all the ribbon cables connecting the screen. The first thing to do is pop off this Wi-Fi antenna and it's connected with this little antenna cable. Then there's a ribbon cable under this piece of tape. A ribbon cable up in the corner. And one of the upper screen ribbon cables underneath it. There are two screws holding in the thumb pad and then you can pop out the thumb pad by prying it upward. It can be a bit difficult to pry it up, but with a little tool or maybe a flathead screwdriver, you can get underneath it and help lift it free. And it's attached to the board with another ribbon cable. Then there's the SD card slot that's held in with two screws and is connected with a ribbon cable as well. With that removed, you can remove the two screws and bracket, though that might not have really been necessary with this model. There's a small ribbon cable here and then the bottom screen ribbon cable as well. There are four screws holding down the board and with those removed, the board can come free. Just watch out for that Wi-Fi antenna. And there's one last ribbon cable for the upper screen on the underside of the main board. And there's the board completely free of the case. Here we can see the ribbon cables coming from the top screen and it's likely something along here or maybe the lower screen is giving us the issue. Usually when a screen is either damaged or not connected properly, it'll cause the 3DS to not turn on and it'll have that odd little popping sound as well. So maybe one of these was misaligned or perhaps torn from years of being open and closed. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble it just to see if that fixes anything. Hopefully it does and that's a simple fix or else we're looking at something more involved to get this back to working condition. The reassembly process is just everything in reverse. The ribbon cables are a real pain to get back into position, especially these from the top screen. I find that opening the screen all the way up gives you the most slack to work with and trying to reattach these. 
Also, having some fine tipped tweezers really does help. If you're looking for some, I'll leave a link down below where you can pick some up from Amazon. And if you do click that link and buy something, I'll receive a little bit of a commission, which really helps support the channel. All right, so I'm about ready to give up on this, but then check this out. With the screen all the way open, there we go. The screen all the way open, look what we get. Okay. But then as soon as you move this. Okay. All right. So that's telling me that it's one of the cables under the screen that's really, really loose or something. All right. But hey, I got life in here, so I think I'm going to give it another shot. So I did go through and tear the 3DS down again just so I could take another look at the upper screen ribbon cables and make sure I didn't miss anything. Unfortunately, it still didn't end up turning on. All right, well, we did manage to get the DSi working pretty well with the shoulder button, so that's nice. Unfortunately, the 3DS still doesn't turn on. Did manage to get it to start one time with the screen all the way opened, so I think it's really one of those ribbon cables in there is torn. I'm going to reach out to uh, Brayden and see if he wants me to maybe tear it down more, see if I can figure out which of those cables is torn and if he wants to you know, buy a replacement cable, and I'll try and fix it if so. If not, I can just ship it back to them. Um, but, you know, at least we got one of them kind of working, and hopefully, the, you know, at least he knows that this one does power on if that cable can be fixed. You could always just sell it, you know, on eBay as, uh, you know, parts repair, because these still go for a pretty good amount, so um, always an option. And if you've made it this far and you have a console you want me to work on, just reach out at fixmorewasteless at gmail.com and let me know what console you have, what issue you're having, and I'll let you know if I think I can help. You know, it doesn't cost anything, just shipping to and from, and, you know, 
if there's something major like a screen or a cable that needs to be bought you're going to be responsible for that but otherwise i'm just happy to help if i can i know some people just don't want to take their consoles apart they're nervous and i completely understand that the first time i take any console apart i'm really nervous uh it's a lot easier after doing it several times and you're not as nerve-wracked that you're gonna break something but it's still there and um so i completely understand that and you know if you're willing to pay the shipping to get it here then i'll take a look at it why not hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned something useful and if you did why not hit that like button and if you're new around here and you like the video you like the content you want to see more why not subscribe so you'll be alerted when my next video comes out um yeah just whatever you do have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll catch you in the next one